let's bring on our first guest and it's a welcome back to the channel to mr brian dale yes brian good afternoon my brothers and everyone in the chat how are we doing good good very good good to be back um how are you feeling after that first game of preseason? Mate, I was, I was just saying to the guys in the back, I think I saw more attempts on goal in this game than I did the last three months of the season. Yeah, literally. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like we've popped Tottenham Viagra and the attacking <laughs> football has, 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 has come back. For me, there's two negatives, one a big negative, but a lot, a hell of a lot more, as you guys have been saying, positives than there are negatives. Um, the, the major negative is obviously that defence is we, we, it's clear that th this it needs it needs major work um and those center backs need to be sorted out quickly and the other one is just really 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 nitpicking and it's just literally having 30 attempts on goal and only i know it's the first game whatever but you hopefully we saw this with potch as well where we had like 30 attempts on goals in games and just couldn't get the ball in the net and uh it's a, like I said, it's the first game. It means nothing. West Ham have had their third game. This is their third game. So fitness levels and everything. So that is really, really nitpicking. But there's so many positives. So many positives to take. Yeah, tell me about players um, who really stood out for you um, in Andrew's first game. Who were you really impressed by? So I, I was listening to you both in the second half and you mentioned, you, you forgot to mention one guy. And I think you know who I'm going to say. My boy, Alfie Devine. We did mention um, him, Brian. Don't do the dirty. I, on when, us. When I, no, I think you did, but when I heard you talking, you mentioned start, you mentioned uh, La Celso and Adoji, who were fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, Pape Matasar, huge fan of his. I mean, to tell you the truth, in all honesty, that second half team looks so much more balanced, so much more creative, so much more uh, uh, in sync with each other than the first half team did. Mano Solomon did good in the first half. So did uh, Bissouma. But I think there's a lot more positives to take from the second half team than there was the first half team. Yeah. And what do you think that was? Do you think that was down to the cohesion in the team or was it due to maybe a fresh 11 coming on against maybe a bit of tired legs? I don't, do you know what it is, Ben? We've now got players. You look at the Celso and obviously people are talking to if one stays out of the Celso and London Ballet, who is it? Do we keep them both? Do they need to go? Their attitude stinks. They were both brought in by an attacking manager in Poch. And then we know what happened. And they've had to deal with defensive managers ever since. And then you look at it, an attacking manager has come in that will play to their strengths. And I think Gio, personally for me, came on as like, you know what, I've got a manager that plays my style of football now. Now I can do what I was brought here to do. All right, it's only one game. But you've got to say fair play to Gio Lo Celso for a performance like that. I think he was sensational when he came on. Where, where do you stand on the Gio and, and Tangi debate? Do you want to see them stay? Do you want to see them go? What, what's your opinion? So, Gio, you know I, I had this when I, when I did something on my channel with a good friend of mine, James. And we were having the Lacelle, And he said about the Ndombele, which kind of made me swing more. Not that I'm like you, Ben. Once he walked off, I, I, I don't want him to have another chance. But if Ange wants to give him another chance, I back Ange so Ange gets whatever he wants or, or does whatever he wants. But my friend James was saying to me, do you know what? If you need a player to come on with 20, he, he can't give you a full game. So having Undumbele on the bench and coming on and causing havoc for 20 minutes, 30, whatever it may be, is he capable of doing that? We, well, we, we know he can. We know he can. We know he can put in a good 20, 30 minute shift. We also know that he can't. Lo Celso has just, we, we discussed his attitude and I, I, I was kind of leaning, I was kind of leaning towards what James was saying with Ndombele, using him as a sub to come on and change the game, not to start games. But Lo Celso's just put a real big marker down for me. Really has. Mm. Really has. I was very impressed with what I saw from him. And again, like I said, it's one game. It's one mm. game, so we can't really judge a lot from it, but it, it was a positive thing to take from it. Brian, we had some new guys in action today. Vicario, uh, Adoji, and yep. Madison, and Solomon, four players making their debuts. What was your opinions on how they played? Uh, Adoji and Solomon, very, very impressed. Very impressed. Um, the goalkeeper, I think he could have done better with the first goal. Could do nothing with the second. And the third, he was just black-footed because of uh, Davison Sanchez just well, not holding the line. or. Third. Oh, that that would that would help them, wouldn't it? That would help. That, that's how clever <laughs> that I was help, looking at it. So, so he's definitely at fault for the third goal. Sell him immediately. How could he not save that? Um, and 
Uh, who was the other? I'm just trying to remember. Who was the other? Doji, Madison. Solomon. Madison. Madison. Madison did bits, didn't he? He did little bits. There was little interchanges. Um, I would have hoped for more from him. But like we said, it's his first game. Listen, they, they, they flew to Australia two days ago. Mm. Two days ago and straight away. I mean, I know how my jet lag is just flying back to Toronto and coming back here. And that's just a five-hour difference and an eight-hour flight. Not a God knows how many hour flight and then the time difference uh, between what part of Australia maybe, they're in. Maybe so a bit of a difference in the way you guys travel, though. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> just, just, just maybe. Just maybe. I, um, they're not in a. They're not in an economy like me, squashed like a sardine, are they? Well, um, you never know with Daniel Levy. To be fair, <laughs> you said that, not me. On the record, <laughs> you said that, Ben, not me. Before everyone goes, oh, here he goes again. Um, but yeah, Madison, listen, it's going to take him a little bit of time. Um, his, his link-up play in some parts were good. I mean, I, I, will, I will say as well, and he, he, he is like a new player to us. Basuma was very impressive again, wasn't he? Mm. Mm. Yeah. He yeah, was I very impressive. To me, he is, he's like a new sign in the RD fig- featured last season with his injury and out of position. It's a, a positive thing from him. I read somewhere on Twitter there was a theory posited about um, the difference between the first half and second half, and someone was saying that... Um, the fact that Kane was uh, continually coming into deeper areas, trying to pick up the ball, led to less space for someone like Madison. Whereas when Richarlison and Lacelso came on, Richarlison was trying to stretch to play a bit more, trying to get beyond the last man more, and maybe that led to Lacelso having more pockets of space. And so maybe um, <coughs> Kane getting into Madison's areas might have been something that uh, we need to look at. I think you're right, uh, Simeon. I think we also had this discussion, or people were discussing this last season with Perisic and some, weren't they? Oh. Is one affecting the other? And is this. Um, I'd like to think that with Kane and Madison, who have played each other, obviously, for England and players at, at the elite level that they are in, can sort it out. But Kane, Kane, I wasn't impressed with today. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on with him and what, what we don't know, the, the four wins and outs, what's going on. But Kane has had to do that for so long. Maybe he just needs to be trained out of it by Andrew and say, right, listen, we've got Madison in now. You don't need to be doing this. You stay up there and be the ruthless predator that you are. Leave that stuff to Madison. It's like, like we said, it's their, their first game together as teammates for, for, for club. And it'll be a partnership that I think will flourish if Kane is still here. So uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But I think you're right, Simeon. This is a... We'll, we'll look into it, but it, it was a, a huge debate with this, with, with Perisic and Sun, wasn't it? So maybe it is something that will develop. Yeah, so all in all, I mean, I know we lost today, but are you walking away kind of thinking a bit more positive about the, the coming season? So, so put it this way, D- did we all want attacking football? Yes. Did we get it? Yes. Did... I, I, I don't care. I mean, there, I can see a few West Ham fans in here going iron, iron, and talking about the league... Um, uh, and talking about being in a final and everything, it's a pre-season game. I couldn't give a monkey's if you beat a 6 nil. All I care about is fitness, getting the players to play well together, getting the players to understand each other. So when it comes to the Premier League, we can deal with the Premier League. The, 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 in all honesty, these these results really don't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. The pre-season is all about getting the team right, getting them to know what Ange wants to do. So when the real business starts... On or August the thirteenth or whatever it is, away to Brentford, we're ready. I mean, West Ham are probably getting a DVD lined up, ready to to release because they've they've what they've beaten a uh, they've beaten Tottenham in a pre season friendly in Australia, um, and it's big news for them. Listen, we got new players coming out, and we're we're trying to get into the right team uh, and the right frame of mind. So, like I said, this um, the the result means nothing. The the positives we can take away from it far outweigh the result, the negatives and everything else. So it's a step in the right direction. Now we just desperately need to sort out these centre-backs before the beginning of the season. And there are things to be positive about. Is that the only area for you now that you would like to see signings in? Um, well, obviously, that, that see, it all depends on Kane, doesn't it? We don't know what's going to happen and until we know that he's officially staying. that that That's an area of concern. I wouldn't say it's a a necessity to spend, even if we sold Kane and spent the money on two elite centre-backs, that would be a step in the right direction for me. And then we can deal with what, we will ascertain what the strikers do up until January, then we can dip into the market, the defence. If we're to only sign two players for the rest of the season, it has to be two centre-backs. Has to be. Agreed. Brian, 
Always a pleasure to speak to you, my friend, especially on uh, after the first game of the Ange era. Thank you so much for coming on today. My pleasure, boys. Have a great show. I'm not even going to do what I do today because today is about the performance. So uh, I will just say keep up the great work, guys. Everyone subscribe to their new channel as I have. It, they do everything they can to give unbelievable content on both platforms. So make sure you subscribe. And everyone have an awesome day. Speak to you later. Big up. Big up.